while the kids are going, if you would like to turn with us this morning, we're going to be reading from Psalms, the 63rd chapter. Psalms, the 63rd chapter. And if I had a thought this morning, it would be, did you come to worship? Now, I know that sounds like probably a pretty elementary uh, question to ask. I mean, of course we come to worship, right? I mean, why else would we attend church? If we didn't come to worship this morning, it would be kind of, uh, uh, it'd be almost uh, counterproductive to spend our time here if we didn't come to worship. So in order to worship, I guess that means that we probably all prepared our hearts this morning. And this week, as we went through our week and our daily lives, we were probably looking so forward to being in church on Sunday morning that we, uh, throughout our week, we were, we were conducting ourselves and we were living our lives and we were uh, focusing our attention to get to the point to where when we got here this morning, that our worship would be unhindered, that, that, that it would be unfettered, it would be unchained, right? I mean, that's what we do, right? We come into the house of the Lord to worship, right? I mean, after all, He is God. I mean, basic elementary religion tells us in the Baptist faith that we worship God. I mean, I would say, and I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I would say more than likely that most people who showed up this morning has a, at least a basic uh, belief that we are here to worship God, that he is worthy of worship. Right? I would say that most people, when you come in this morning, was probably hoping that somehow, some way, under some circumstance, that when you leave this morning, that you leave here feeling better than you came in. That somehow this morning, either, either you are going to feel refreshed, renewed, you was going to feel lighter in your burdens, you was going to feel closer in your walk, you was going to feel better about yourself than when you came in the building this morning. And for a lot of you, you expected me to do that. I mean, Brother Randy, I mean, that's, that's what you're there for, right? That's, that's why you're the pastor. You carry it in your pocket. And, and God knows that, that we're going to stand in need of all this, so he's going to give you extra deep pockets in which to carry in the worship that we're going to have to have in order for us all to feel better about ourselves. Well, I can tell you what I got in my pocket. I got a handkerchief and a pocket knife. Now, if that makes you feel better about yourself, one, you're in sad shape. And two, you ain't looking for much because I got a pocket knife and I've got a handkerchief in my pocket. But I think where we miss the boat sometimes is that we come into the house of the Lord and we, we want this refreshing, we want this renewing, we want to be able to rejoice, but we don't do anything to prepare ourselves for the worship when we come in. Now, in the Old Testament times, okay, back, back in the days of the Levitical priesthood, there was a certain order that they had to go through in order to come in and worship. I mean, you just couldn't come in any old way. Matter of fact, common people like us didn't even get to go into worship. We, we basically counted on somebody else to worship for us. And we prayed that they would do it right. And we would give our offerings of doves or calves or goats or lambs or whatever it was that, would required, that was required for that particular offering. And we would hope that the priest was in good enough shape that when he went behind the veil, that he was in good enough shape not to die for doing it. Now, the great thing is today, you don't have to count on me to be in good enough shape for you to worship. Now, I pray that I am. I pray that, that when I come in, that my heart's in a place that I enhance your worship. I pray that when I come in, that my, my heart and mind is in a place that I can enhance your worship or build it up or make it better. I hope and pray that I don't do anything to detract from your worship this morning. But you see, I can't make you worship. I can, I can lead the horse to water, so to speak, but I can't make it drink. 
I can put out everything that God puts in front of me, but it's up to you to use it and to do with it what God wants you to do with it. Now, in the 63rd chapter of the book of Psalms, it gives us kind of an attitude about worship, okay? So read with me. This is a Psalm of David, okay? It says, O God, thou art my God. Now start, I know that sounds like a very quick place to stop, but think about that for a minute. David's first statement, his declaration is, O God, thou art my God. Can you imagine today if we were to have that attitude? O God, thou art my God. God, you're my God. I, nothing else takes your place. You're number one above everything else. God, you are my God. And God, I'm here to worship you. It says, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I lift up thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Now, if we could come in with that attitude in the house of God, can you imagine what worship would be like? Now, I know the other night, you know, Darren, we was having choir practice, and Darren said, you know what? He said, I would to God that we would sing out, that we would, we would find our voice, that we would find our heart for it, that we would sing out and just let the rafters ring with our, our music and our, and our song. And you know what? I, I, I crave that day, but I also realized, that, and one of the things that has happened, now, I know we've been having 7 o'clock prayer time, and I have been asking God what that should accomplish, and it keeps coming back to this one focal point is our worship and the worship even though music is great and we should be able to sing loud it shouldn't be just because we want to hear our voices it should be because it rings out of our heart in praise for God Amen. you know not scared about what anybody thinks not scared what anybody's going to say and my own key off key on pitch off pitch high low it don't matter we sing with our whole heart because we are praising God with our voice. But you know what that comes from? That comes from a proper attitude. How many of us today, when we came in through the doors of the church, and, and that was my prayer as I stood outside this morning and I watched people enter the doors of the church, my prayer as each person entered was, God, help us to come in with a heart, dear Heavenly Father, that's ready for worship. Help us to come in, Lord, with a heart that's ready to declare your praises. God, help us to come in with a heart that's full of your goodness. And I ask you this morning, did you come into the house of God this morning with a heart that was ready to worship God and full of his praises? Or did you come in with everything else on your mind and heart this morning? Well, I'm, I'm a preacher, you don't realize how bad it is. I'm hurting, I'm aching, I've got pains, the sun's too bright, the wind's blowing too hard. You know, my wallet's empty, my wallet's too thick. You know, I'm hungry, I ate too much. You know, it's too cold, it's too hot. I mean, we come in with a laundry list of things in our heart today, but how many of us come in with a heart saying, you know what, when I come in this morning, I want to be pleasing to God. When I come into his, his halls, I want to be pleasing to him. When I serve God, I want my whole heart to be centered upon God. We come in and out the doors of the church, and we may, we may leave disappointed sometimes because, well, that service was kind of dead. You know why that service is kind of dead? It's because we're kind of dead. Because I can tell you something, God's not dead. The Holy Spirit is not dead. Jesus Christ is not dead. He rose again on the third day so that we could have life, and not just life, but life more abundantly. 
you saying, brother, am I going to be rich? You can't be in the spirit. Because why? Because I centered my life on him. David said, God, you are my God. If we could just declare that statement with a true heart and a full heart, can you imagine where we'd be? God, you are my God. Can I ask you today the question? And I don't want to see any hands. And, I, and the reason I ask you this is because I want you to reflect for just a moment. Is God really your God? Is God really your God this morning? Or have you replaced him or sidelined him with something else? Well, I've got family troubles or I've got health troubles or I've got, I've got job troubles or I've got all these other kind of troubles. You don't understand how bad it is. It doesn't matter how bad it is because God's still God. And no matter how high the mountain you're looking at or how deep the valley or how wide the river, it doesn't matter because God made the mountain, God made the valley, God made the river. God is still God. At no time does God stop being God. God doesn't take vacations. God doesn't take breaks. God doesn't have an off day. Matter of fact, God don't even have an off switch. There's never a time when God turns off. God is always on 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year, 366 on leap year, and he is always available. He is God. So the quicker that us Christians can get that through our mind, that God is God, the better off we'll be. The more that we remember that he is the creator and we are the creation, the better off we'll be. The more we realize that he is on high and we are not, the better off we'll be. Because David made a statement here. He said, God, you are my God. God, you're my God. The same psalmist who later wrote, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I'm going to ask the question this morning. I hope and pray that this is a 100% yes, but don't raise your hand because I'd be disappointed if you said no. Was you glad this morning to get and come to church? Now, I've done spoke to a few people this morning that came in, and they was like, mm. You, you could tell from the minute they walked in the door, I am not happy to be here. You can't make me be happy, preacher. Well, you're right, I can't. And I can't make you be happy for anything. But you know what? You can choose to be happy this morning. You can choose how you worship this morning. I can't make you worship. You can choose to worship. He goes on to say, he, and, and I want you to get this, this idea of him. He says, he says, early I will seek after thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. I, can you imagine? He says, I'm, I'm thirsty for you. I'm hungry for you. I rise up early to get to you. I mean, can you imagine today if that we as God's people who are here to worship, and that's why everybody came, right, to worship. If we said, you know what, God, I so want to be in your presence. I so want you in my life that my soul is hungry for you and my, I, I, my soul is thirsty for you. And God, I, I get up early to be there with you. And God, I want you so bad in my life. God, I want your holy presence about me. God, you're number one. And God, I'm not going to worry about all those other things. And I'm not going to let all that other stuff drag me down. And I'm not going to become entangled with all this other junk because, God, you're still God and I want you in my life. Now, I'm not going to tell you today. I'm not one of these people that can tell you, well, you can just lay everything aside and it'll be okay. Because I can guarantee you what's going to happen is when you walk out the door today, Satan is going to throw a bunch of stuff at you. And he's going to try to get you all tangled up. He's going to try to drag you down. And he's going to try to get you all mixed up in your feelings, okay? But here's the thing. God's still God. And in the midst of all that chaos that the world throws at us, we as God's people can, can, can firmly say, God, you are my God, and I'm so hungry for you, God. I want you in my life. And here's what's not going to happen. Here's what's not going to happen is that when you truly are seeking after God, God's not going to leave you without. When you truly want to be rejoicing in the Lord, God is not going to leave you without. Can I tell you a little story about me the other day, okay? I can preach on me, right? And that way I don't have to defend anybody. The other day I had a bad day. I had a bad day. I had an aggravating day. Well, actually, I didn't have a bad day. I came home, and Andrea was in there, and I, I, I was so frustrated. I, walked in, I said, man, this thing stinks. 
And I walked on out, and I went to the bedroom. And I had a couple little aggravating things that had happened during the day. And I went to the bedroom, and I, I was changing clothes. And, and it was like one of those moments when the Lord just speaks to you. You know what I'm talking about. He said, really, this day really stink? No. No, it didn't. Was it as bad as what you're really acting? No. No, it wasn't. Lord, I'm sorry. I spoke out of frustration and I spoke out of haste, but I spoke foolishly. And I apologize. And then, it gets even better. I had to go find my wife and apologize to her. I had to go find my wife and say, Honey, I am sorry. I misspoke. This day has not stunk. This has been a good day. There has been a couple of aggravating things in my day, but I should have not let that rule my day. You see, all too often, the reason I take that story is all too often, we let the little things rule our day. We let the little things come along and, and knock us off our perch or distract us or distort our vision. And then the reality is that God was still God of my day. He still loved me. He still provided for me. He was still there through all of that, good, bad, and ugly. He was still through every bit of it. He never left me, so I had no right to stand and say, God, this day was a bad day. Because, God, it's a good day. God, it's a good day. You know why it's a good day? Because I am saved by the grace of God. Amen. I have a heavenly Father that loves me, that provides for me, that cares for me, and that at the very, at, if my life ends today, you know what's going to happen? He's going to take me into heaven. How could I have a bad day? When we come to the house of the Lord, if we remembered all of his promises and all of his goodness, if we remembered all of his provision, you know what would happen? Is that we would worship him. Amen. You couldn't help but worship him. You couldn't help but get a little bit stirred up. Because let me tell you something, I'm looking around, and it don't look like many of us has missed a meal in quite a while. And I don't know... But as I stood on the front porch this morning, I didn't see very many people walking up. Most people rode up in an automobile. And some of them were pretty nice automobiles. And they had gas in them. And, and we didn't have to have a horse and buggy. And God provided all that. And, and plus, a lot of you are sitting here with your family and your loved ones. And you're sitting right here with your friends and your church family. And I didn't, see, I didn't see a person hit anybody in the nose while we had fellowship. Now, some of y'all may felt like it, but you didn't do it. And that's a blessing. You see, the great thing is we look past God's blessings so many times. We look for ways not to worship God. We look for more ways not to worship Him than we do to worship Him. We look for more things to be sour and mad and downcast and pessimistic about than we do to be optimistic and positive about. Well, Brother Randy, you don't understand. I stubbed my toe. Did you stub all ten of them? Well, no, just one. Well, you got nine more that ain't stubbed. Be, <laughs> be glad for that. You see, we look for more things to be pessimistic about than we do to be optimistic. If Christians were more optimistic, if Christians were more worshipful, if Christians were more on fire with God's love inside of them, can you imagine what would happen? Now, I'm not fussing at anybody. I'm just telling you. If you like being quiet, then you come to the right place. If you like sitting and doing nothing, you come to the right place. But if you come to worship, then we got to change some things. If you want to be on fire for the Lord, we got to change some things. If you want to be fired up in your service for God, we got to change some things. In the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, 21st, he says, Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptance, acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Now, the very next chapter, or the very next verse of that chapter says, for our God is a consuming fire. Boy, can you imagine if we come in with our godly fear, want to, to be acceptable of him? When, when, the, when the Levitical priest would go in, 
they had to they had to make sure that there was no leaven around them. They had to make sure there was no dust around them. They had to make sure they hadn't touched anything clean or anybody around them had touched anything unclean. They had to have their garments put on a certain way. They had to have the ephod and they had to have all, everything set just so. They had to have the belt just so. They had to have everything just so. They had to have the offering just so. Everything had to be done just right because when they walked in, if they wasn't right, you know what happened? They were struck dead. So godly fear, oh yeah, they had some godly fear because there was a chance when they stepped behind the, the veil, they stepped across the line, that if things wasn't right, they were going to fall dead. Now, can I ask you a question today? If you had to make sure your heart was right before you come into this house to worship this morning, would you have been falling dead when you come through the doors? Now, Brother Randy, that's your job to get us right. No, it is not. <laughs> My job is not to get you right. My job is to preach you the gospel. My job is not to walk in your shoes. My job is not to live your life. My job is not to, to help you get closer to God that you should be doing. My job is to preach you the gospel so that you know the gospel so you can get closer to God. Amen. So don't you blame your problems on me. I got enough of my own. I'm having to do my own apologizing. And the thing about it is, I wonder today, when we come in the house of the Lord, did you come in here to worship? Did you come in to worship? We sang a song a while ago. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, you've been so good. God, you've been so good. How many, how many people today, and don't be ashamed, how many people today, if God's been good to you, say amen. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Lord, I'm sorry for even asking that question if that's all we get out of them. If God has been good to you today, say amen like you mean it. Amen. There you go. Because you know what? He's been good to you. Can I tell you something? If God gave you nothing other than his saving grace, you could never say for the rest of eternity that God has not been good to you. Because God is good to us. And then you start looking how he has started piling on blessings and blessings and blessings and blessings. And we walk over top of them and we trample all over them and we have to kick them out of our way to make our way. And God's still pouring blessings in on us and we never even stop once to say, Thank you, Lord. It used to aggravate the far out of me with the kids. They would have laundry piled up a foot deep in their room, have to stomp over top of it, kick stuff out of the way, and then complain they ain't got a thing to wear. And I would like to say that's particular to, uh, to children, but you know what us adults do? The doggone same thing. We'll kick blessings out of our way and complain that God hasn't done a thing for us. Can you imagine if we got back to what David was talking about? God, you are my God, and I thirst for you, and I hunger for you. God, I seek you out. God, because I, I want to see your power, because I've seen your power. God, I want your power to be in my life. God, I want to see that working in my life. For those of you, amen, that have been saved by the grace of God, don't you yearn to see more of the power of God in your life? God, I want to see it. God, I want to be fired up by it. God, I don't want to make a walk like everybody else. I want my walk to have a spring in my step when I move because, God, you're in my movements. God, you're God. You're my God. He goes on to say, because thy loving kindness is better than life. God, I mean, think about that for a minute. God, your mercy and your loving kindness is even better than my life. God, your goodness is better than anything I can experience. I've seen some beautiful sights. I, I've beheld some gorgeous things in life. But you know what? God's loving kindness, his mercy pale, makes all the rest of them pale by comparison. God's grace is so much better. 
You know, if we would just look and say, God, I want more of that in my life. God, you've allowed these eyes to see some things, but God, it's not what the eyes have seen, it's what the heart's seen. God, I want to see more of that. God, I yearn for that. God, I can't speak for every other person in this building, but for me today, God, I hunger and I thirst and I'm seeking, and God, I want to see more of your loving kindness made evident in this place. And then he goes on to say, though, and here's where it comes around. Thus, will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. This was, can you imagine if we come in this morning, Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I want to praise you. God, it's all about you. God, it's not about me. It's not about what's distracting me. It's not about what's bothering me. It's not about what's troubling me. It's not about what, all those things. God, you are God, and I'm not, and I praise you, and I lift up my hands to you. God, I just, I'm just on fire with you this morning. Can you imagine? He says, my soul shall be satisfied. Now, here's the crazy part. If you get the chronological order of this, one, he seeks God. He thirsts after God. He hungers for God. He, he, he goes after God. He wants God's presence. He declares God in his life. Then he says, I will lift up my hands in praise for you. Then, okay, then, then I will be satisfied. You want to know why you're not satisfied? Because you're not worshiping God. You want to be satisfied, and when you're satisfied, then you worship God. God, fill me up, then I'll praise you. God, give, answer my prayers, then I'll, I'll declare you. We want it to be like that. We want to get it turned around, don't we? God, I want everything from you, and then I'll lift up my hands and praise. How about this? How about we get it in the right order? God, you're God. I'm going to praise you, and then when I praise you and I get close to you, then I'll be satisfied with whatever happens. You want to be satisfied this morning? Get it right. When you come to worship, it's not about, well, if they sing the right song or if they sing it on key or if the preacher preaches right or if somebody moves, then I'll be rejoicing. You see, that's the wrong way to do it. You got it in the wrong chronological order. You come in saying, God, I'm here to worship you. And if everything else happens, that's great. I'll be good. God, it's not about you fill me up first, then I'll praise you. Say, I'll praise you, then you'll fill me up. You see, we got to get it right. So many of how many of y'all ever made a deal with God? God, if you do this, then I'll do that. I've been guilty of it. God, if you, if you answer that prayer this way, then I'll know everything's okay. God, if you answer this prayer, then I'll know that's what you want me to do. God, if you answer this prayer, then I'll know I'm blessed. You know what? God said, son, you are blessed to start with. And, and, I, and I, I don't make bargains. You realize what bad shape this world would be if, we allow, if God allowed us to make bargains with him? I mean, it'd be a sad place. God said, I'm God, you're not. You praise me, and then watch what I do. Folks, if we want to get it right this morning, if we want the church to grow, if we want things to go right, then we can't sit back and say, well, when God fills the pews, then we'll praise the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you want to get it right, here's what we do. We praise God, and God will fill the pews. <laughs> we praise God, God will fill our heart with song. We praise God, God will make us not afraid to serve him. But we got to get it right. we got to come with a mind to worship because he is God. And we are not. But it says, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. You see, Psalmist David here, he said, I'll meditate on you. I think about you. I think about you all the time. When I'm in the bed, I think about you. When I get up, I think about you. Can I ask you a question? And, and, and I want you to reflect on this just a minute. How much of the percentage of your day do you think about God? And I know you've got life to live, okay? I'm not a fool. 
I know there's things that have happened. I know there's things that, that you've got to take care of, and there's business things, and there's, there's life things, and there's family things, and there's health things, and there's all these things that we have to do. But I'm going to ask you a realistic question. How much of your day do you spend thinking about God? Well, if I get rid of all my things and my things get done, then I think about God. How about this? How about you think about God and all your things? God, my job things, I think about you. My family things, I think about you. God, my health things, I think about you. And when I ain't got nothing else to do, I think about you. Because you are God and I am not. And God, you're worthy of my attention and my worship. God, you're worthy of my praise. And when I start thinking about this, you know what it causes my heart to do? It causes me to rejoice because you are God and you love me so much. And doggone if you ain't so good to me. I mean, you bless me on top of myself. And here I sit. Arms folded. You were going to sit back and say, Brother Andy, you can't make me do anything. Hey, you're exactly right. And I'm going to be honest with you this morning. And this is going to sound harsh. I don't care. You say, Brother Randy, you're supposed to care. Listen, I brought you the message that God put in front of my heart. And what's really funny is Bobby looked up there on the screen when he came up and he said, you ain't going to believe this. This is exactly what we taught on Sunday school this morning. I said, I would believe it because God's trying to get the message across to us. That we need to worship him better. Now, if I fix food and you're hungry and I set it before you, and you turn your nose at it, you know what? I can't help you. I can't help you. When, my, when I was a kid, my mama used to fix things, and, and one of the things that she fixed, and I, and I, I absolutely I, I didn't like a thing about it, my mama would fix boiled potatoes, salmon patties, and green beans at the same meal. And at that point in my life, I didn't like salmon patties, I didn't like boiled potatoes, and I didn't like green beans. And you know what? My mama didn't care. She said, when you get hungry enough, you'll eat it. Can I tell you what a young teenage boy will do? When you get hungry enough, you'll eat salmon patties, boiled potatoes, and green beans. And it may not be your favorite, but you'll do it. And this morning, when you get hungry enough for worship, when you get hungry enough for God's presence, you will come and worship him. Now, you know what I endured for a long time? I endured hunger pains. There was a time or two that I would get up from the table and I would go to the house. And, and unlike today's kids, my mama didn't run a buffet. You got what you got when you got it or you didn't get it at all. Now, the time is now. God has put it before you. God has reminded you how blessed you are. God has filled up your life. God has gave you more and abundant probably than you've ever had in your life. And if you can't worship him now, when do you, exactly do you plan on doing it? Like Kaylee said a while ago, it's a shame that people only pray when they're broke. It's a shame we only worship when, when somebody has to ring our bell or, or remind us of how good God is. But it's a starting place, all right? So let's worship God today. You say, Brother Randy, it's time to close. It's just now time to open this is God's time. So if you feel like worshiping, let's do it. Uh, Darren, if you will, get us on. And I don't know what's on your heart this morning. I don't know how you're feeling. I know how I'm feeling. I'm feeling mighty full today. I'm feeling like God has been really good to me. I'm feeling mighty blessed today. And I feel like just saying one more time how much that I appreciate my God for being my God. He is so good to me. Yesterday, as, they, as, as, as we get ready to sing, yesterday I had the opportunity to go visit my Aunt Faye for what may be the last time I'll ever get to see her here on this earth. She's getting ready to turn 90 years old in bad health, and as we left, my heart was aching. And I was coming up the road, Tears was trying their best to make their way out. And all I could say was, God, thank you. Thank you, God. Because no matter if I see her ever again on this side, praise God, I'll see her on the other side. God, you are so good. You see, even in our worst days, God is still God. 
Let's worship him like he's God this morning.